Hello, I'm David Harley, writer, musician, songwriter. In the mid-1970s, when I was working in a hospital in Berkshire, I was sitting one evening in my little room in the nurse's home reading an article written by Ron Nurse a few years earlier for the Shrewsbury Folk Club magazine. Or Shrewsbury, if you insist, as many locals now do. Anyway, all that gives you some idea of how exciting my social life was at the time. Well, I was playing a lot of music, but hospital shift work did adversely affect my ability to get out and about. Anyway, it occurred to me that the article would be a good starting point for a song. And indeed it was, except that having written that one folky song, or as the dulcimer player Holly Tannen once remarked, it sounds so old. People started to expect me to do more things like that, rather than the strange mixture of shanties and blues that comprised most of my repertoire at that time. And that, folks, is how I started along the road to concentrating on my own songs, rather than interpreting the music of others. Be that as it may, I was gripped enough by the story to work it into a song that closely follows the article. You'll find the song further along. But first, some historical background would be in order. The first lines of the song make a little more sense if you know about the Shoemaker's Arbour. This is a stone archway in the Dingle, which is part of the park known locally as the Quarry, and to the rest of the world as the Quarry Park, much to the disgust of the Shrewsburyists. Anyway, the Dingle is the part where stone was once quarried and is now a rather attractive sunken garden, especially around the pool. At the top of the arbour are the rather battered statues of the saints Crispin and Crispian. The latter is more commonly known as Crispinian. These were the patron saints of cobblers, tanners and leather workers, and the arbour originally stood as part of the Shoemaker's Guild Arbour, across the river on Kingsland, close to where Shrewsbury School now stands. The arch is inscribed, we are but images of stone, do us no harm, we can do none. Hence the repetition of that couplet in the song. While the statues are in poor condition, that condition relates to the depredations of time and vandalism, rather than the state of being legless that followed the Guild Show Day procession on the second Monday after every Trinity Sunday. The show was finally euthanised by the Home Secretary in 1878, just after the birth of the more genteel Flower Show, or the Shrewsbury Musical and Floral Fate, as it was no known for many years well into my lifetime. While the first verse is informed by some of that historical background, most of the song concerns the death of Thomas Anderson, who was charged with desertion and executed by firing squad at a time of unrest following the Jacobite Rebellion. The place chosen for the execution was Kingsland, across the river from the park, where Shrewsbury School and some rather expensive houses now stand. According to Ron's article, the execution took place just below the Shoemaker's Arbour, and the song makes the same assumption. However, there was some disagreement in the 19th century, in Salopian Shreds and Patches, one correspondent claimed that it was closer to the Butcher's Arbour. Since we don't have any remnants of the Butcher's Arbour to look at anywhere, as far as I know, I'll stick with the Shoemaker's Arbour for the purposes of both the song and this article. Anderson was subsequently buried in St Mary's Churchyard in the centre of town. In fact, not far from a pub called The Loggerheads, where I've sung the song many times over the years. Some time ago I looked for that grave in the graveyard of St Mary's, but was unable to find it. In fact, the mossy condition of the gravestones made it difficult to identify people interred there around that time. According to a report from 1815, the grave was inscribed in accordance with Lieutenant Anderson's wishes with the following words. Thomas Anderson, youngest son of George Anderson, Esquire, was born at Gales near Richmond in Yorkshire, January the 13th, 1720. Departed this life December the 11th, 1752, aged 31. Stop, traveller. I've passed, repassed the seas and distant lands. 
can find no rest but in my Saviour's hands. I believe Ron's source material was found in the Shrewsbury Chronicle archives, although there's other material relating to the death of Thomas Anderson, notably in the Shropshire Gazetteer. Sadly, Ron passed on some years ago, but I was at least able to sing the song in his presence, tell the story of how I came to write it, and shake his hand once more at a Shrewsbury Folk Club reunion some time before that. There's a lot more background material in an article at wheelalice.com slash collaborations slash Thomas hyphen Anderson. And here's the song. Vocals and all instruments by me. In case you were wondering, the fiddle and flute are actually courtesy of an electronic keyboard. I don't really play either of those instruments. However, the guitar, bazooki and mountain dulcimer are all real instruments. We are the images of stone. Do us no harm, we can do none. St. Crispin and St. Crispian are we On the arch of the shoemaker's arbor Above the river on Kingsland we stood On the gate to the hall of the shoemaker's guild Where the bakers, the tailors, the butchers, the smiths And the saddlers to the guild arbor's build each year in procession, the guilds gave a show And marched through the town to the sound of the drum Then it's back to Kingsland to feast and carouse And enjoy the great day the guild members come We are but images of stone do us no harm, we can do none. Saint Crispin and Saint Crispian are we on the arch of the shoemaker's saga. On the 10th of June, 1752, in a house called The Crown, which stood on Pride Hill, John Richard's workmen received a week's pay. There they stayed and drank their fill. When a red coat patrol chanced to pass by, men mocked and revived them, singing Jacobite songs. Who struck the first blow, no one was sure But a bloody riot soon raged through the town The authorities trembled with passion and fear The news of this Jacobite outburst was known House of Hanover had one few hearts, and the Stuarts still plotted to win back the throne. And so that same year, one raw day in December, the rebellious town spoke of Salop and looked on. Up below the old arch of the shoemaker's arbor, they made an example of Tom Anderson. Who was once spared by death on the field of Culloden Then joined the dragoons, but deserted, they say Only to die on the banks of the Severn By the firing squad on a cold winter's day When the black velvet Sid was stripped from his body The Shabbatia's colours were beneath it to the sand Received from the hand of Bonnie Prince Charlie, who 
Which caused like young Thomas lies broken and dead It's two hundred years since Barney Prince Charlie died drunk and embittered an old man in Rome. And a century ago, in the flowers of the dingle, the old Arbor Gateway found a new home. Now who's to remember the shoemaker's guild or the Jacobite rebels? Who fought for the throne? Who's left to grieve for Tom Anderson? But these two hearts of stone. We are but images of stone. Do us no harm, we can do none. Saint Crispin and Saint Crispian are we on the arch? Of the shoemaker's eye.